Several weeks ago, I did a VO2 max test at the University of South Australia's Exercise Physiology Lab. If you're interested, I achieved a result of 55.2 mils per kilogram per minute at the age of 51. And I've made a short video about the test. You can see that here. I later sat down with Dr. Max Nelson, who ran the testing on the day, to talk about VO2 max as an important determinant of health, wellness, and longevity. And we discuss how the timing of your fitness training journey through the lifespan can affect your VO2 max potential. Here is the second part of a longer discussion with Dr. Nelson. So what, why is VO2 max so important in life and why is it so important for endurance sport and endurance activity? So, I mean, starting off with life, VO2 max, because it's a term that people use all the time, whether you're talking about health, whether you're talking about fitness and performance. From a health perspective, it tells us what is your body's ability to use energy uh, in your, or release energy in your aerobic energy system. And if you can't release energy well, uh, things are more likely to go wrong sooner for you. And so VO2 max, in addition to being a really important sporting parameter, is really strongly linked with mortality and overall health yes. outcomes as well. Yes. And so although you don't need to get a VO2 as high as yours to have good health outcomes, people with really low VO2s do uh, are strongly linked with things like mortality, earlier onset of disability, adjusted life years. Uh, and so it is an important health value that keep tabs on as well. So in, in general, if you have a better VO2, you live longer and live better? Uh, in general, yes, that's right. And because it tells you your capacity to do tasks to some extent. We know that as you get older, you're gonna lose various parts of your physiology and fitness. They're not gonna function quite so well. And yep. if you're able to have that as high as possible, you're not only using your VO2 uh, and tapping into your energy systems when you're on the bike. If you're gardening, if you're walking upstairs, if you're walking down the street, if you're doing tasks at home, you're dressing yourself, these are all things that require energy. And if your fitness your VO2 is really low, they might be things that put you really close to your limit, and therefore it's gonna make even accomplishing those tasks really, really problematic. So it's a really important health number as uh, in addition to being a really important number for performance in sport. Okay. And is your potential VO2 max predetermined at birth, or can does anyone have the potential to develop a great VO2 with, with the appropriate training? It is somewhat genetically predetermined, but it is still a, a, a parameter you can manipulate through training. Or you can also manipulate it by sitting on the couch forever and probably manipulate it in a different direction. <laughs> uh, but it is, for anyone to get the highest of the highest VO2 maxes, there is a reasonable proportion of genetic uh, aspect to it, and it is somewhat predetermined, but anyone who is not currently training, if they start training and push themselves really hard, they could probably increase their VO2 max by 70, 80% for some, for many people. Uh, that might still not get it up as high as yours, but certainly you can get it a lot higher than what it currently is. Mm. Not everyone will be able to get it that much. Some people will be able to double it or triple it and take it from a number like 30 up to a number like 80 or 90 if they're a one in a million athlete. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is, although it's not as something that doesn't change as much as some other things that we can train and measure, but it changes a lot more than something like maximal heart rate, which people can see when they use their watches and they exercise a lot of the time. Yep. That's pretty fixed. But things like VO2, it's a little bit fixed, but it's also something you can train and move up and down. And if you, if you were to start your endurance training later in life, say as a 40, 50 year old, mm -hmm. and you hadn't done any as a younger person, would you still be able to get your VO2 max to the same level as maybe you could have if you'd been doing endurance training all your life? Typically not, typically not. But that doesn't mean you're not gonna be able to get it a lot higher than it is and not gonna be able to uh, achieve really well from a functional perspective and be able to do really well in whatever sport you choose to take up later in life. But there is uh, a lot of, uh, with your muscles, with your physiology, there is a lot of what we refer to as plasticity, whereas if you've had a higher up when you are younger or previously in your life, it's gonna be easier for you to get it up there later in life. Okay. Uh, that happens with VO2, it also happens with your muscles. If you made yourself a really strong person when you were in your 20s and 30s, you're probably more likely, if you then pick it up again in your 50s or 60s, you're probably more likely to get it to a higher- Even, even if there's been a big gap? 
Yeah, even if there's been a big gap, the longer the gap, the less you'll probably be able to get it right back to where it was. Yeah. But once you've uh, had muscle, once you've had fitness, once you've had performance, it's almost always going to be easier for you to get it back in awesome. most cases. So the, the uh, training and lifestyle decisions you make as a teenager and early adult um, have some important ramifications later. They, they do have some important ramifications, but certainly not ramifications that are going to necessarily stop you doing anything unless the thing you want to do is be the absolute best in the world. Yes. It might stop that a little bit, but it's not going to stop you from being able to go out and become someone who's really competent, really fit, really good at a certain sport, certain task. Uh, and just be able to have a lot of fun and uh, kick some great goals. Yeah. But it might stop you winning the uh, Masters Games or something at an international level, yeah. but it won't stop you beating me up at the summit on a Sunday. <laughs>